What's up Simonics, welcome to a new episode with the title Why is Simon not finally switching to Flutter or React Native? It seems like I get this question at least once a week by a comment on YouTube or by email. Today I want to finally clarify why I don't use Flutter or React Native and also give you an idea of how you can evaluate situation or your situation if you're constantly getting asked or feel like you should get into the latest and greatest technology. So here are a few reasons why I use what I use and why I don't use what I don't use. If you don't know it yet, my current stack is Ionic with Angular and for the backend I tend to use Nest.js where I previously used Node.js. So in general, everything JavaScript. And sometimes I really feel like I have to justify why I use Angular or why I use JavaScript. I just don't know why this question comes up because everyone has a different situation and everyone has personal preferences, experiences, job related issues. So we will get into all of these now one by one. First of all, you should evaluate the needs you have uh, either for you personally or in your job. For me, my needs are I want to build applications which I can deploy to iOS and Android, but I also at the same time want to develop for the web, which means I'm looking for a language framework that I can use across these different platforms and especially reuse most of the code. For example, if you want to start a new startup and you know that you're going to need a website where the application works and you want to have an app, then Ionic is a great choice because you could basically have everything inside one project, one repository with your code. It's one framework, one language, and you can deploy it everywhere. But your needs might be, of course, different. Perhaps you're only uh, after developing native applications and you don't really want a website or anything like that. In that case, another choice like Flutter or React Native or perhaps even completely native iOS and Android development might make a lot more sense. But in my case, the uh, Ionic Angular stack is perfect for my needs. The second thing to consider is what is the best framework. And I had a video on this in the past. I don't really like this discussion at all. If you want to watch this video, I will link it below. Basically, I don't think there's any framework that is the best right now. The React people always claim that React is native. The Angular people kind of not really claim that their framework is the best. And the Vue people basically already know that Vue is the best. So in absence of a really best framework, uh, you should always ask yourself what is the best framework in my situation. Some companies only use React, some have used Angular in the past, uh, some use whatever, C Sharp, C++, .NET, anything else. It is really a choice of the situation and the thing you are gonna build. With all of these frameworks you can't really go wrong. And that also brings me to the next point, number three, which is uh, the maturity. In the past, I kind of hated when my coworkers uh, were relying on some old technology stack for enterprise. And I, I didn't really understand why people don't try something new. By now, my opinion has changed a bit, I would say. Because if you're using something uh, for a long time and the framework is developed over a long time, it has come to a certain level of maturity. All of the frameworks mentioned before, like Angular, React, Vue to some degree are at a very good level of maturity. The projects are accepted widely across everywhere in the world, uh, across all developers, just like other stacks with Laravel or uh, Rails. You can't really pick anything completely wrong in that domain. If you want to try something uh, fancy, then yeah, there might be some flaws to a very young frameworks. Especially with Nest, I was waiting uh, long enough to, to see it rise in popularity and uh, getting to a good foundation, but now I feel like it has already arrived uh, at this stack. Same with Note before, uh, Note on the server side was always seen as why, why would you JavaScript on the server side? But right now it's not really a question. Big companies already used this in the past with different frameworks like I think Sales or Harpy, Koa, there are many great of them. It just shows that the whole ecosystem uh, is at a very good maturity level. So you shouldn't feel bad about picking something related to this. Things to consider number four is the expertise. In my case, I've been working with Angular for about five, six, 
seven years, kind of like that. I feel like I'm kind of a bit expert on the topic of Angular and Ionic. And because I do all of this online, I feel like I should be an expert on the topic that I talk about with you. If I would now go ahead and switch to React, I would be like the full movie once again, or PHP or anything like this. This is also different for every person. Some person uh, or some developers like to know about every single framework a bit. So they know a bit about Angular, about React, about Vue, also on the server side, perhaps even about native and they can just do it all. But I prefer to be more like an expert in one thing. Right now, Angular is really a huge platform with a lot of things uh, that I know about and also a lot of things that I don't really know about yet. So there's still a lot to learn for myself. And I feel like I don't have the time to learn both React and Angular and perhaps even a third one or getting into something completely different like Flutter. That's just behind my, my what I can do. So you always have to ask yourself, do I want to be an expert in one thing and do this really good and know about a lot of ups and downs and how to solve tricky situations? Or do I want to be this generalist who knows about everything a bit? I don't know if there are a person uh, that is an expert in everything, I guess there will be, but these are like the unicorns or the 10x developers, so I think 90% of the developers should focus on being good in one thing. Which brings us to number five, jobs and career. I've seen comments in the past that said there are no Angular jobs and I kind of disagree and I kind of don't understand where this is coming from, but I have an idea. First of all, if I do a quick search uh, within a German site, I will find a lot of Angular jobs in Germany. But I also feel like this is different in, from country to country and perhaps uh, in the United States, even from state to state. In the Silicon Valley, I feel like React Native, uh, React is currently the hottest shit or perhaps even Flutter right now. But I also feel like in countries, uh, especially in Asia, uh, I see a lot of developers inside the Ionic Academy that are using Angular and Ionic is very popular in their country. So I feel like there might be a difference from country to country related to jobs, but if you're looking for remote jobs, if you're looking on Upwork for freelance project or anything like this, you will see that there are enough jobs for <laughs> Angular, there are enough jobs for uh, React, there are enough jobs for basically everything. And I feel like just saying there are no jobs is an excuse for not looking correctly or perhaps if your country is very specialized on one technology stack, then okay, then I accept this. But I don't accept the general assumption that Angular is bad on a scope worldwide. On the other hand, you of course have to ask yourself in which field I want to make a career or where do I want to be in five or ten years. If you don't see yourself working with the Angular stack or with the React stack, then of course choosing this stack might not be the right uh, choice in your situation right now. So evaluate if you don't have a job right now, if you're in university, uh, look at the jobs available and see which skill might be the best for these projects. And finally, the last uh, item to evaluate, number six, is my business. If you're a self-employed developer, you know you have clients and you know about your past work and you know about what clients are looking for. In my case, it's also a bit different since I run the Ionic Academy. It doesn't really make any sense for me to go to Flutter since I, I don't know what... what ah, that. It's something that just wouldn't be economically logic for me since I have so many people relying on my Ionic and Angular knowledge that it doesn't really make any sense to switch to React Native or Flutter for me. I kind of understand that uh, with Ionic related, uh, people are now also looking for Ionic React and Ionic Vue, but this again comes back to being an expert and I'm not really an expert in either Vue or React by now and I don't feel like I become an expert uh, over the next foreseeable future. From that point, it really doesn't make any sense for me to, to switch to anything else than Ionic and Angular, which are currently the, looking, the people looking for when they go to my content or the Ionic Academy.
All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this quick or not so quick discussion about the tools and why I don't use certain technology stacks. If you're in the situation that you don't know which technology stack to pick or other developers are telling you you definitely have to check out this and that, try to evaluate everything really in a quiet moment with the items we discussed before. Think about what is really important to you, what you want to do with your career, why you can get jobs, the maturity of these frameworks or languages that you perhaps want to learn and also if you're self-employed what is the best choice in your situation and of course if you're just a developer and want to get into something new that's totally fine uh, if you feel like something is adding value to your life just by checking it out or perhaps gaining a new perspective then why not go for it if you have the time to do it i hope this vlog kind of clarified the question why i don't use flutter or react native in the next future I guess I will still get the comments uh, every now and then, but now I can actually uh, link people to this video with a very clear explanation. I would love to know uh, your opinion on this question as well. If you also feel like you have to learn something new, but you don't really know why you should actually learn it, then leave a comment below and I would love to start a discussion on this topic. Please not on what's the best framework. I will not answer those comments, but I hope you have a great uh, week with the framework of your choice and doing a great job with the tools that you know about. I will catch you next week, like always, so happy coding, Simon.